in the spring of 1972. It was towards the end of the Vietnam War and the US was deep into the process of pulling all of its troops out of Vietnam. There were very few American combat troops still left in the country at this point, and U.S. air power accounted for most of the force in the region. Along with military advisors who were there preparing South Vietnamese troops to continue the war on their own. Unfortunately, North Vietnam saw this as the perfect opportunity. So in late March 1972, they sent ground troops, tanks, and artillery across the demilitarized zone to begin a full-blown invasion, known as the Eastern Offensive. The U.S. responded to this by launching B-52 Stratofortress bombers and EB-66 destroyers, which were electronic warfare aircraft that could jam missiles aimed at the bombers. On April 2nd, one EB-66 aircraft was shot down just below the DMZ. Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Hamilton was the only survivor, and he was now trapped in the middle of the enemy offensive. Army helicopters tried desperately to reach him, but one of the helicopters was shot down with no survivors, and the rest were forced to fall back. The Air Force then began its largest rescue mission in history, and it did not go well at all. In six straight days of air rescue efforts, more than a dozen men were killed, and six aircraft were either downed or damaged. Two Americans had been taken prisoner, and close air support pilot First Lieutenant Clark, who had also been shot down, was now stranded with Hamilton in enemy territory. U.S. military leaders decided that the only way to rescue these two pilots was by ground troops. So they asked a man named Thomas Norris to lead the rescue effort. Thomas Norris was a U.S. Navy SEAL and one of few special operators still remaining in the region. Norris and his small team of five Vietnamese SEALs were more than willing to go in after these pilots. And on the night of April 10th, Norris and his team began their mission. The team decided it would be better to first go after Clark, the more recently downed pilot, as he was not as deep into enemy territory as Hamilton but they would still have to travel through more than a mile of heavily controlled enemy territory to find Clark. After carefully maneuvering around enemy units all night long, Norris's team picked up on Clark's movements in a river that he'd been instructed by radio to float down. This late at night in the jungle, it was pitch black and the team couldn't see Clark at all but they could hear him breathing heavily and struggling to stay above water as he moved down the river. It took until daybreak, but the team finally found Clark in the water and convinced the pilot that he would be safe if he followed their lead. But they weren't out of danger yet. The team now had to maneuver their way back out of enemy territory just like how they came in, but this time they wouldn't have the cover of night to help keep them hidden. But thankfully, the team managed to make it back to the forward operating base without being spotted, and they were able to safely deliver Clark to the medical aid station. Later that day, the forward operating base was hit with an enemy rocket and mortar attack, which for this specific base was pretty much a daily occurrence, but this day's attack was particularly deadly. Two of the Vietnamese SEALs who helped rescue Clark were killed in the attack, and several more people were severely injured. The wounded and Clark were evacuated by helicopter out of the base, but Norris and the remaining three Vietnamese SEALs stayed behind to continue their rescue mission. Real quick before we continue on with this video guys, I wanted to let you know that I've officially launched my Patreon. My Patreon page is where I'm going to be sharing all of the combat footage and photos and stories that are just a little bit too graphic for YouTube. So if that's something that interests you at all, it is going to be the top link down in the description below. It is also one of, if not the best way to support the channel. So if you're interested in supporting what we do here on the channel, that is a fantastic way to do so. But either way, Thank you guys so much for all the support. Every one of you that watch my videos and like my videos and subscribe, 
I could never thank you guys enough. I have the best job in the world, and you guys are just amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all of your support. But with that out of the way, let's continue on with this story. That evening, Norris and the team tried to reach Hamilton twice, but both attempts were unsuccessful. For the last five days, Hamilton had been communicating on and off with the Air Force forward air controllers via radio. They were helping him move from hiding spot to hiding spot in hopes of getting him to a nearby river so Norris could easily get to him. On the afternoon of April 12th, a forward air controller located Hamilton and notified Norris. Because Hamilton hadn't been able to get any of the survival packages that had been airdropped for him, he was struggling big time. And the forward air controller stressed to Norris the urgency of finding the pilot as soon as possible. By this point, only one of the Vietnamese SEALs was still willing to continue help with the rescue mission. To be honest with you guys, I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce his full name and I don't want to butcher it, but after a bit of googling, I think you pronounce his last name Kiet. But I'll put a picture of him on screen for you guys to see. But now with only two seals remaining, Norris and Kiet came up with a genius idea to rescue the last pilot. They decided to dress up as fishermen and float down the river through enemy territory in a small Vietnamese canoe-like vessel. They traveled down the river all night long, passing numerous enemy encampments along the way. And thankfully, at dawn, the SEALs found Hamilton. He was exactly where the forward air controllers said he would be. Norris and Kiet put the injured pilot in the bottom of the canoe and started covering him with life vests and bamboo and vegetation and basically anything they could get their hands on to cover up the pilot. And once he was well concealed in the bottom of the canoe, they began their journey back to the forward operating base. Along the way, they managed to successfully sneak past multiple enemy rocket positions. And in what must have been the biggest pucker factor situation, they managed to evade a North Vietnamese patrol that tried to stop them. As they approached the relative safety of their forward operating base, the small craft was attacked by heavy machine gun fire from a North Vietnamese bunker. The trio quickly beached their canoe and hid in the jungle. After checking the area for enemy ground forces, Norris then called in an airstrike which fired at the enemy bunker and provided a smoke screen that gave the trio a chance to get back into their canoe and safely reach the base. Hamilton was treated for his injuries and eventually recovered. If it wasn't for Norris and Kiet's undaunted courage and dedication to the cause, he and Clark may have never made it home. Six months later, during another combat mission, Norris was shot in the face and suffered severe head injuries. He was saved though by Lieutenant Michael Thornton, a fellow Navy SEAL who earned the Medal of Honor for that rescue mission. Norris medically retired due to his injuries, which included the loss of his left eye. His rehabilitation required numerous surgeries over the span of several years. Norris learned he would receive the Medal of Honor for rescuing the two pilots sometime in 1974, but he didn't actually get the medal until March 6th, 1976. In 1979, after getting a disability waiver, Norris became an FBI agent, which is what he'd hoped to do when he entered college more than 15 years earlier. He worked at the agency for 20 years and was an original member of its hostage rescue team as an assault team leader. Over the past several years, Norris has taken part in various Navy and Medal of Honor events and discussions that celebrate the meaning of the medal. And Kiet, the Vietnamese SEAL that helped Norris rescue the two pilots, actually became a U.S. citizen in 1984 and moved to Seattle, where he worked for the Boeing Corporation for almost 20 years before retiring in 2005. Kiet also received the Navy Cross for his actions that day, which is the highest award the United States Navy can give to a foreign national. 
and Kiet is the only South Vietnamese Navy member who was awarded the United States Navy Cross for actions during the Vietnam War, which is pretty amazing and he definitely deserved it. With that guys, that's going to be the end of today's video. Thank you so much for checking this video out. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to show your support. But if you didn't enjoy it, feel free to hit that dislike button and make sure you leave me a comment down below letting me know what I can do to improve my future videos. Any and all feedback is greatly appreciated here.